Can you play Star Citizen on a relatively cheap gaming laptop? That's what this video is all about. Let's get into it. So for quite a while, I've had a few people asking me, is there any way you can test a laptop? And I, for a while, thought I would love to, but the cost of these things is just so much and I, I just can't really justify it. But this laptop was on offer from eBay or eBay had an offer on with this manufacturer with a load of money off. So I managed to pick this up for £749. I'll put on the screen how much that costs in other currencies. And here it is, it's a laptop. And that is what this is showing us. Some marketing stuff, swords, bar charts that don't really tell us anything, but then let's get to the interesting stuff. Specification. Now, we've gone for this middle option here. That's what I've got. It has got an 11th gen i7 in. We'll have a look at that properly in a minute. And then also we've got a 3050 Ti four gigabyte. Now, CIG have recently, Ali Brown has recently come out and said, they're targeting four gigabytes for the long term. So normally I would say you wouldn't necessarily want to buy this, but but actually I think as we'll see in the benchmarks as we go through, it's not actually too bad for Star Citizen. It does only have a 60 watt uh, power limit basically, uh, which is quite low for 30, 50 Ti's for laptops. So one of the things with laptops is that they, they basically are all quite custom. And so different versions of the 30, 50 Ti perform differently in different laptops. That to me seems really silly coming from desktop where normally you buy a 3060 for a desktop and it, it just does what it says it's gonna do and they all perform pretty much the same. But that is not the case on laptop and if you're looking to buy a laptop, you should do some research. They all, the power basically just determines how much performance you can get from them. So that's that. It comes with eight gigabytes of DDR4. Obviously that's not gonna work for Star Citizen. So I've upgraded that to 16 gigabytes. Let's have a quick look at the CPU. It's the i7-11800H. And the interesting things really are, it's an eight core 16 thread CPU. So plenty of cores and threads. Max turbo of 4.6, but I think an all core of 4.2. Uh, and it's got a 45 watt power limit. That's the interesting stuff. Really, this is a previous generation CPU now. So you'd be looking for the latest Ryzen parts from AMD or the 12th gen from Intel on the laptop part. But as you'll see, it does actually do pretty well. Okay, let's get into some benchmarking. Here is the first result, Lawville, the place where I do the most testing as always. And I've got this up against the brand new Alder Lake i7 12700KF with the 3080, as well as the 5900X with the 3080, and then also the minimum spec PC the i5-8400, which has got also a 1066 gigabyte in. So the first two, top two there, obviously, they are going to blow this away. They are desktop parts, full use of all the power that they can use, and that's not surprising. I was a little bit surprised with the Lawville testing that it quite handily beats and is much better experience than the minimum spec PC. In Lawville, most of the run, it's kind of flipping between being CPU bound and uh, GPU bound and really as we get into these benchmarks you've got to say that for Star Citizen this this laptop in particular with a quite high-end CPU but quite medium to low-end GPU is really quite well balanced for Star Citizen. Next up let's have a look at Area 18 which is a traditionally very heavy part of the game for the CPU and you'll see here in the results that yes all of these results are CPU bound even with this low-end uh, GPU still this is CPU bound but actually, it's quite handily beating the i5-8400 and you would you would definitely take this over the minimum spec PC. Again, it just performs so much better and the, it's really the 1% lows as you go through the results. Uh, back in Lawville as well as this, you'll see these, the just general experience with using the laptop is much smoother than using the minimum spec PC. Okay, next up in space, and this is another CPU bound result. Nothing is being pushed here on the GPU and you'll see that Again, it's outperforming the i5-8400. You kind of expect that because obviously the i5-8400 is just a six core part, no hyper-threading, whereas this is a eight core, 16 thread CPU. So significantly better on that end, but then it's a laptop part. So again, CPU, heat, how high can it boost? How long can it boost for? And actually it's not destroying the minimum spec PC. Let's put it like that. Let's have a look at quantum travel, which quite heavily pushes the GPU for most parts. For the 3080 for the top two results, doesn't touch it really at 1080p, which all these results are at. But for the laptop and the minimum spec PC, they are completely GPU bottlenecks, slammed really. Uh, but you can see here that even though the 3050 Ti, four gigabyte uh, VRAM, 
it is a very low in part it is beating the 1066 gigabyte so by quite a big margin as well that's a significantly better result and uh yeah it doesn't necessarily always sell that so so one of the results in a second is going to change that up a bit but on the whole it's very playable to get 38 frames per second in quantum travel that's pretty good. So let's finish these off with looking at the clouds of Horizon. We've got medium clouds, we've got very high clouds. And interestingly, although Horizon is really brutal on a GPU, it's also pretty brutal on the CPU. These first sets of results are all CPU bound. So on medium clouds, the CPU, we can see basically how it performs in Horizon. And you'll see here, the minimum spec PC is really struggling, but actually the 11800H is doing quite well, really. That's <laughs> quite playable for Star Citizen, which obviously isn't playable in most games, but we've all signed up to this game and we know performance is going to be a bit lower. But when you switch to very high clouds, the top two results, they're still CPU bottlenecks. The 3080 can quite easily run uh, very high clouds at 1080p. That changes as you update resolutions. But for our two competitors at the, the bottom end, the laptop is now dropped below for the first time the 1066 gigabyte. So I think what we're seeing here could be a few things. One thing, it could be the VRAM. It could be the fact that you've only got four gigabytes of VRAM on the laptop uh, 3050 Ti. That might be affecting things. It could just be an architectural thing. Sometimes different generations of GPU are better at different things, but all in all, you're not gonna be popping very high clouds onto a laptop or a low-end PC. You're just not gonna be doing it. So this kind of just really shows us how these GPUs perform under real stress. So what to make of all this? Well, quite a few things are quite interesting. On the whole, this performed better than I was ever expecting, really. I wasn't really sure what to make of this coming into it. In the past, I have thought that basically laptops would really struggle with Star Citizen. My previous experience with Shadow Gaming uh, Cloud Service, which basically uses a Xeon, quite a lot of cores, but quite low clock cores, that wasn't great and the CPU really was the problem there. So coming into laptop testing, I thought, well, is it going to be similar? And that might have been true of older generations of laptop parts, but with these latest ones, it seems as though they can clock high enough, they can hold those clock speeds as well, and they're relatively decent. They are beating out the minimum spec PC. They're obviously nowhere near the desktop parts. We've got the power limit that we talked about before. The power limit is a real problem, really, for laptops. We've got heat, power, noise. Those are the things, really, you're, you're taking uh, as a drawback when you come into laptops. This was very loud when you're gaming, you want some headphones on. Uh, and also the battery, you wouldn't even want to consider playing on the battery because I think, I'm not even sure I got an hour out of it when playing on the battery. Uh, you definitely want this plugged in at all points. But really, we know that if you've got a choice, you're probably going to choose desktop. But some people haven't got a choice. Some people need to have a laptop. Some people need to be on the go, or they just want the flexibility of being able to take this on a business trip or on holiday or to their friend's house. There is, There are good reasons to have a laptop. And, and really what we can say from here is, can a laptop run Star Citizen? A relatively cheap gaming laptop? Yes, and it's not bad. And obviously as performance optimizations come, as we say, Gen 12, Renderer, Vulkan, that might make a difference because the eight cores, 16 threads of this laptop weren't being completely slammed, but as we know, the render thread makes a big difference to slows everything down. So as they come into the game, the fixes with those, we might see better performance on a laptop like this. So really, it's pretty positive. Like, subscribe, join the Discord, become a channel member, all that stuff. That's enough for this one. See you soon. Bye.